Gentlemen, just sit by your name. All right, we've got the TCU Horned Frogs, number nine seed in the South. Uh, a couple of rules and regulations. Silence your cell phones. Flash photography is prohibited. Make sure you announce your name and media affiliation when asking questions. Limit of one follow-up, raise your hand to get the floor. And the student athletes for TCU, Emmanuel Miller, Mike Miles Jr., Chuck O'Bannon Jr., and Damian Baugh. It goes right to the media for questions. Raise your hand and Polly will find you. Uh, Jeff Wilson with Frogs Today. Fellas, you're, you're here. What, what's it been like the last, I don't know, 18 hours of getting here and getting settled in? Anybody specifically or? Anybody. Okay. Chuck. Uh, you know, it's exciting to be here. Uh, we're still trying to take it in. Uh, we have some juniors, some seniors on the team, but in a sense, we're all freshmen because this is our first time. So we're all just trying to take it in, but at the same time, staying disciplined to the fact that we're here to win. Uh, we're here to compete. Uh, we're here to go far, far in this tournament, and we have to take it one game at a time. So this senior hall game coming up tomorrow uh, is what we've been focusing on for the past two days, uh, past three days, actually, just preparing ourselves mentally, physically, uh, so that we're capable to get this W. Hey, Charles, uh, Nick James, KUSI here in San Diego. Just a quick question for you about your tie to the tournament with your, your dad, your uncle, and all that. How cool is it to be a part of that tradition to get up and down and run the floor just like your, your relatives? Right. Uh, you know, growing up, I always, <clears throat> always looked up to them, you know, so being in this position is just a blessing, you know, nothing more. Uh, John Titel from HoopsHD.com. For Emmanuel and Mike, I believe both of you have won gold medals before. So as you know what it takes to win it all, what does it take to win it all? Uh, it's hard. It's not easy to win. It's the biggest prize everybody going for. Uh, you just got to stay together throughout everything. Everything ain't going to go your way in every game. So you just got to stay focused on the main goal, and that's what we're looking to do. Uh, yeah, to add on to what Mike said, it's definitely not hard. Uh, we're going to be going, going up against the best players in the country, uh, the best coaches in the country. Uh, to win this thing, it's going to take a complete team effort, and we know that we're brothers and we got each other's back to do so. Mike, Drew Davidson for Star Telegram. What's your take on Seton Hall after studying for a few <coughs> days? And, you know, it looks like they're a physical team. I mean, are you expecting a pretty physical matchup? much like you guys had in a uh, Big 12 play? Uh, yeah, we're expecting, you know, we, we know they want to win just as much as we do. You know, they're big, they're strong. Everyone in their style lineup is 6'6 six, six or uh, taller. So we know it's not going to be easy. They're a good team, but um, it's nothing we haven't seen before in the conference we're coming from. So we're going to be ready. Uh, for Dame, Colin Post, TCU 360. Seton Hall kind of thrives off of points, off of turnovers. How important is it for you guys who have kind of struggled with turnovers sometimes this year to take care of the ball, especially in transition? Uh, we don't really think of, uh, of that. I mean, we're just going to go out and play our game. and Everything can take care of itself. Any other questions for the student athletes? Mike, you guys got some some name and affiliation again. Oh, again. All right, Jeff Wilson, Frogs today. Mike, uh, you guys got some some rest. You guys had some guys who needed to heal up. How how are you guys feeling as you get ready for the, for this? Uh, I wouldn't say one hundred percent, but you know those couple of days did give us a, some time to get ready for this uh, for our hardest game of the season, the most important game of the season is coming up. So. Uh, I wouldn't say everybody 100%. We all still got nagging injuries, something that bothers, something that's bothering us. But you know, there's no excuse. We still gonna go out and play. Like we don't have any injuries because we know how important this is to our team. My ankle good. Brian Esrich, TCU Sports Network. Guys, all four of you like to get to the rim, but you haven't seen necessarily a rim protector like uh, Obiagu for for them. Do you do you change your game? Do you have to do anything differently? 
with a seven foot two guy sitting there in the middle of the lane. And Emmanuel, we'll start with you, and maybe all of you kind of talk. Uh, about. You know, uh, good question. Uh, yeah, we're going up against a seven footer, but I think the mentality for each and every single player is to still be aggressive. Uh, no matter who's in the paint, uh, we have to have the mentality that we're going to get a bucket. Uh, yeah, yeah, he's taller. We got to play, a, do a better job playing off two feet, uh, finding open guys. But I think we're all going to be pretty aggressive. Uh, like E Man said, it's obviously going to be a challenge, but. Uh, that's not going to change the way we play. Uh, we're all very capable of getting to the rim and finishing. So, it's you know, for me, I'm just going there like I always do. Uh, obviously, I don't want to get my shot blocked, but, you know, I'm going to challenge him, you know, and just play my game. I don't have to change anything. Uh, yeah, it's going to be very important, you know, just to play off of two feet, you know, pump fake, <laughs> get him off his feet, you know, play around him. So that's what we need to focus on. Same thing they said. <laughs> Um, Joseph Hoyt, Dallas Morning News. Um, Emmanuel, um, obviously the NCAA tournament, you know, has lofty, you know, dreams and aspirations for yeah. players. I'm just curious how how it's felt the last couple of days, knowing that this is going to be Man. an NCAA tournament appearance for you. It's it's like a dream come true. Uh, but this is only the first step, part of my dream. My dream is to win it all, and I think playing Senior Hall first is part the first step. But being with my team on Selection Sunday, uh, having that feeling that, damn, like, we really made this. Like, we're really going to be in the tournament playing against the best players. Uh, it's, been, it's been a dream. It's been, it's been thrilling, uh, to say the least, just because we know how hard we work from since the summer. Uh, we know what we're capable of doing. And to finally be able to show, showcase it on the biggest stage in NCAA basketball with millions of people watching from back home, uh, it's a great feeling, man. It's a great feeling. Uh, Colin Post, TC360. Mike, you guys look pretty locked in right now. Just talk about the way that intensity has kind of grown for you guys over these last few days as you've been getting ready for this game. Uh, Yeah, we, we are locked in right now. You know, the coaches has been on us, you know, the past couple of days in practice. So we don't have no choice but to be locked in. Uh, like I said, this is the biggest game of, my, of our life coming up. And uh, we got to take it as serious as, as anything. And that's what we're doing. You know, we're practicing hard. We're scouting them hard. You know, we want to go win the whole thing. But we can't do that without beating Seton Hall. And just a quick follow up, Mike, as well. Just how do your wrists feel right now? Do you feel like they've kind of progressed since <coughs> you re-entered them back in January? Uh, the left one is good. The right one still, you know, still giving me some problems, still hurt. But, you know, I've been playing through it for about two months now. So it's not going to change anything. Any other questions for the student athletes? OK, thank you very much, thank gentlemen. You. Good luck. Nicely done. Thank you. All right, a recording of this press conference will be available in the NCAA Digital Media Hub, ncaa.veritone.com. Transcripts are provided by ASAP and will be posted shortly. Thank you. Coach Dixon will be here at 1120. Well done, Colin. You're already in.
All right, good. How you doing? Good. How are you? They want me to wait at least a couple minutes, but if you're eager, I will fudge it a little bit. All right, we will get going. A uh, reminder to everyone, silence your cell phones. Flash photography is prohibited. Make sure you announce your name and media affiliation when asking questions. Limit of one follow-up. Raise your hand to get the attention of us. And Coach Jamie Dixon will open with an opening statement. Uh, well, obviously excited to be here. I think, uh, um, I think this is the spot we wanted to go to, uh, San Diego, because of our uh, connection and so many students that we have from California, especially so Southern California and San Diego specifically. So we're excited to be here. Uh, we'll have a big contingent. Uh, we've got some alumni events set up already, so uh, we're looking forward to it. Obviously playing a great team in Seton Hall, a program I'm obviously familiar with, played against, uh, coached against a number of games uh, over my career, and so uh, know the program, know Kevin very well uh, too, good, uh, good friends, uh, go way back. And uh, uh, just uh, I'm excited about what he's done uh, at Seton Hall. I remember when he got the job there, and so uh, uh, coming from Iona. So uh, we are uh, uh, go way back, and um, that. But as far as uh, our team, uh, excited uh, for him. We've got a, obviously a young group. We're not as old as uh, the Seton Hall is with all their uh, grad transfers, but uh, we have a uh, group that has a lot of energy. It's gotten better as the years uh, gone on, and and, and really. Uh, um, has uh, uh, improved in, in offensively, I think, uh, mostly, uh, and, and defensively. You know, we, we've uh, uh, we've uh, ranked high in, in some categories, but obviously, rebounding is our thing, and and what we do well, and what we have to do well tomorrow. So, looking forward again to the to the opportunity to play here in front of a lot of fans. Colin Post, TCU 360 coach. I uh, I asked Dame this, but Seton Hall really thrives off of getting points off their opponents' turnovers, and you've talked all year about trying to get y'all's turnovers down. Does it feel like it kind of needs to culminate for y'all to win this game? Well, here? we've been lower, Colin, as you know, in the last uh, five games. Our numbers have dropped. They're pretty good, uh, a pretty good number. So, you know, it's something, again, as I talked about, our offense being better, we're better. Uh, because of that, uh, we a young group, obviously, a, new, a lot of new players, especially on the perimeter. So um, uh, we've uh, improved at it, and we'll continue. But I think everybody would say the same thing. We're, we're, we come from a league where they force a lot of turnovers. The numbers are high. We're, our league is, in our league, we probably have, we're, I think, second or, 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 uh, or next to last or last as far as uh, most turnovers in a league. So it's just a league that forces a lot of turnovers, plays that way. But Seton Hall is, is someone that does play that. It's a very physical defensive team, older. That's all we faced all year long in our conference. So um, we're younger, but uh, um, I, I think improved. Drew Davison for Star Telegram. Jamie, you talked hmm. that your team's gotten better as the season's gone on. What do you think of practice this week? And how do you feel they are going into this game? Yeah, you know, we kind of uh, thought we might be out here in San Diego, looked at the dates. So we went Sunday before the uh, election, selection show, and then we went uh, uh, Monday. We took Tuesday off. Uh, I just didn't want to go five straight days over my years' ex experience uh, being in the tournament. So that was uh, that's where we did, and I think it worked well for us. Uh, we had a good practice today. You know, we went short this morning. Uh, live stuff. We'll get some shooting up here now. But um, you know, we really tried to, in some ways, uh, simulate uh, uh, the aggressiveness, the physicality that we're expecting from Seton Hall by how we we're playing. And we've turned that on and off uh, uh, a year. And I think that's some of our youth coming into play. But. Um, uh, certainly, uh, this is a group that uh, 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 is excited to be here. It's an, a, you know, a, a lively group, a lot of energy, uh, and uh, I think they're excited to be here. And we, you know, we have obviously a lot of guys that are first time, uh, uh, pretty much everybody's first time being, because uh, we have so many new players, uh, 
uh, first time being in the tournament. So, uh, you know, we only had two returning players last this year. So, um, you know, that's the situation they're in. But they're, they're, they've handled it well. And like I said, today was good. Yesterday was good before we left as far as aggressiveness. Simulating uh, uh, added some sets. I think that's something that I, 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 I can mention too as well. Some OBs and and some uh, and things. And then we talked about some adjustments defensively. Uh, Dana O'Neill at the Athletic. Jamie, hey Dana. Hi. Uh, you talked about you know your familiarity with Seton Hall and Kevin. It's been a bit, um, but when you're doing like a fast turnover like this, does that help you at all prepare with this team? Uh, yeah, it was a dig at my age, I guess, Dana. Yeah, I don't know. It's and say. Uh, um, so, uh, as far as what Seton Hall, um, yeah, I mean, you know, the game's changed. Uh, it, it, the game's changed in two years. I'd say the game's changed in ten years. I mean, we're in a, we're in a whole different uh, environment. They've got transfers. I look at their grad transfers from eight different schools, I think. And, you know, it's just uh, some people just will still seem a little surprised that there's the, the number of transfers that somebody has. But, I mean, everybody has it. And... Uh, we went through the teams in the tournament, and it's just amazing how many how many teams, how many transfers are, and how old the teams are. That's even more remarkable. And then I look at our team, and we're so young uh, at the same time. So, you know, there's different challenges with who can get grad students in, who can get jun you know transfers with, how many units they can come in. So there's all these different challenges, but uh, they they've stayed old. Um, and, and obviously, uh, as the game, that's changed the, how the game is played, too. I mean, it's, it seems like there was a, a push to, to more scoring, and now it's become, you know, don't call any fouls and, and uh, don't call travels. Uh, but um, uh, it, it is, it is a defensive uh, first in, in the Big East after watching some of their games in a lot of ways, and, and certainly our conference has become that as well. Coach Dixon, Brian Estridge, TCU Sports Network. Good to see you. Good to see you. The, uh, uh, have you faced a rim protector this year like Obiagu? Uh, do you go back to Georgetown or LSU? Has there been one? Yeah. How does it change the game? No, I think I think probably he's he's probably the best one at it. I mean, he's solely that's that's his job. And uh, um, but I recruited him six years ago, I think, when I was at Pitt, so I, I, I knew him well. I, that's the thing that when you say familiarity, Dana is like, uh, you know, Aiken. I remember recruiting him. Uh, Obiaco, we went down to Atlanta to recruit him. So there's a, there's a familiarity with a, a lot of their guys uh, on that. So yeah, we I did a home visit with uh, Obiaco. Uh, I it wouldn't have been a home visit; it was on campus. But uh, um, uh, I remember uh, saying hello to him. But um, uh, yeah, just uh, he's different. There's no question about it. Um, uh, they they kind of split time with with uh, um, Samuel and and and. Uh, uh, they'll, they'll throw uh, uh, the lefty from South Florida in there that we recruited too. There's another guy we recruited back in the day. So, um, uh, but that was when I were at TCU. But uh, again, yeah, he's he's different. There's no question. But he was different six years ago when I saw him in high school too. In that regard, uh, Joseph Hoyt, Dallas Morning News. You mentioned the lack of experience that you have with a young team in the, in the NCAA tournament specifically. And I feel like from the outside, it's one of those things where I can feel comfortable about them, but I don't really know until. You know how they're going to handle it until the tip-off actually comes. What do you need to see once tip-off comes to kind of really solidify that? Well, they're, they're, not be, uh, they're not going to be—they're not going to be scared or lack confident. I know that that much. I'm very sure. If, again, we just played Kansas three times in a row. We just uh, in, in a week uh, we've played the other another number one seed in our league. Is just uh, as I told our guys. I mean, you know what we've seen in our league. No one's no one's done what we've done. We had you know seven games in I don't know what it is, 15 days or something it was, and and. All, almost all of them were ranked, and three of them were number one teams. So, uh, um, so we, we've we've seen we've seen what you what you, the best you can throw at you, and, and uh, you know we just got to handle as I say the biggest thing is we got to handle some some mistakes, handle some setbacks. You know our turnovers we've got to still guard. We miss a shot, we've got to guard, get back. Um, you know those are things that I think we've had to uh, address throughout the year uh, and, and ha handling some adversity. So there'll be an adversity in this game, and as there is in every game, especially when you're playing this level. And so we've got to handle that, I think, a little better. Continue to handle better. Uh, Jeff Wilson with Frogs today. Yeah, Jeff. Two, two questions. Does Seton Hall remind you of anyone specifically yeah. in, in the Big 12? We've said Texas Tech, uh, speaking of their, how old they are and their physicality 
and uh, they do things slightly different defensively. They don't have the sole rim protector like that that, that uh, Brian mentioned, but um, you know that's that's the thing that really says. But that's that's the kind of the team, the the, the pure age uh, of the team um, and uh, physicality too. Um, uh, they they run probably more sets offensively, uh, but it becomes a lot of mid post. We talked about that as a similarity, uh, posting up guards, other guys just not their big guy. And, and, and Texas similar like that too, really. Their best shooters are uh, their bigs. And uh, so they play through the post through their guards, similar to uh, Tech in a little way. Then my second question, you, you said they're excited to be here, but do you have to guard against they're just happy to be here? Do you have to, there, it seems like there might be a lot um, of You know, I, 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 I don't think so. We just lost our, our last game. I mean, uh, I, I don't think so. I mean, we're, we're here. We're, uh, uh, we thought we were going to have a, uh, you know, a higher seed, uh, like everybody in the in the tournament, I'm sure. Uh, but um, no, I, I think I think we're uh, uh, we're here to to uh, uh, to advance and, and, and have, take that as a, as a challenge. We know we're playing a good team. We're playing a. Uh, I think maybe um, you know some some signs. It's a little different if you're playing a power conference team. Maybe how a teams look at it and, and a non-power conference team. But certainly we're playing a conference. Uh, power conference team that uh, um, everybody knows the history of Seton Hall and, and how good they've been over. I just met with, uh, I just talked with uh, PJ Carlissimo. So um, I guess my players don't remember the uh, NCAA, the, the, final, the championship game, but I, I certainly do. Uh, John Titel from hoopshd.com. Uh, you and your point guard have been on a great journey over the past yeah. nine months, including a gold medal. Um, what has it been like and how close are you two? Yeah, I, I mean, um, it, it's fun to see Mike grow. He's become more, uh, more of a leader, I think, more outspoken, more talkative. Um, he was very quiet initially recruiting him. Uh, but yeah, as you said, and, and, uh, you know, I mean, that was the sole, you know, they asked me to do USA basketball and that was really the, you know, the, the sole reason I, I, I shouldn't say that that was not so, but a big reason why we doing the USA basketball is to, to be, have an opportunity to be with Mike in, in the summer and watch him grow, watch him get better. And he's a better player now because of that experience. So I think it was great for TCU to have a goal. We never had a guy do that coach in that obviously. So to be, uh, and, and the, and the level of play was so good and, and the, the great players we have, but also the great players that, um, the other teams had Canada, France, uh, the French team was unbelievable. I mean, they uh, no one knows their guys because they're all pros, but they'll all be in the in the, in the, in you know high draft picks uh, uh, coming coming in here very shortly. So uh, I think yeah, there's uh, see that improvement, and I think what enabled us like Mike, you, you have to be the leader because you're the only guy that's played for me. You're the point guard. You know, you've got to lead, and I and I we saw it coming that 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 summer. You know, he was in a position where. Uh, it, I think it, it better positioned him to lead, and and we needed his leadership as a sophomore, you know, because like I said, they have six, seven, you know, grad transfers on, on Seton Hall. We, we we don't have that. We don't have any. Yes. Oh, sorry. <laughs> this is kind of random, but I want to ask you about one of your former Big East brethren, Mike Bray. Uh, is there anybody in your profession who is quite as loose? as he is and and does that sometimes i don't know discredit what he is able to do as a coach um gosh i i, I hope not um you know he's a he's a friend i mean he's one of my closest uh uh friends um you know um uh you know it was, it was interesting watching that game last night and you know i know pike real well and but i really i know mike mike, mike and i spent the whole uh, two years last and there's really COVID because of NABC and our situation. So we kind of were involved in, you know, the, the, the transition. So we, we were on the phone too much this, this uh, COVID time. Uh, he was at the beach in Florida. I was in, in Texas. But, um, uh, yeah, I mean, he's, he's just a good, a great man who's, who's won a lot of games. And, uh, you know, no one can say a bad word about Mike Bray in, in our business. And, uh, uh, he is. He, he he laughs. He has fun. He he goes to the beach. He he enjoys himself, uh, as you were alluding to. And and uh, but he's a good man. And uh, 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 most often, like I said, there's he's certainly is. No, you never hear about any scandal with him. 
uh, Jamie, big picture yes, here. I'm just wondering, after COVID... Can you go name and affiliation again? I apologize. Call and post, TCU360. Um, just after COVID and, and Big 12 tournament last year, no fans and hardly any fans at the tournament last year, just for your team and, and basketball mm. as a whole to be able to experience this event with full capacity, just what do you think that means? It's different. Sport? I mean, it, it, we had two years, really, of it wasn't the same thing. You weren't practicing. I mean, you weren't... You weren't uh, you weren't with your players. You weren't. I mean, again, we were probably hit more than I, I don't know. Anybody had five shutdowns or what we did. I mean, you know, where we had and all the guys we had out. We had a guy that was held out uh, of playing because of COVID, which I don't know. There weren't many of those. And um, so no one was hit probably more than us. And again, our, our campus, the way it is, it's so close knit. It's open. It's it's we don't have online courses. All of a sudden, all our guys are in online courses. I mean, like. You know, that's, I don't know any schools. Are, there's very few that don't have online courses, and and uh, there's very few at our level, and and so it was just a completely different world in in so many ways. And then five shutdowns, and you know, and, uh, Eddie put on uh, 20 pounds in in, in COVID uh, on each shutdown. So uh, as we've have, as has been uh, talked about often and written about and uh, documented. So yeah, this is uh, to me. I think college basketball is back. And I think for a, for a variety of reasons, you're going to see just a different atmosphere, a different level of play, and uh, uh, in this tournament. And I think you saw it this year too. I think it's because uh, um, there's nothing like college basketball, uh, you know. And, and and we were hurt more because of the indoor situation than than other sports, as we know. We had more, uh, uh, you know, regulations or uh, restrictions. I guess a better word and uh, and challenges. So uh, yeah, I think I think we're 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 going to see basketball at its best now. Any other questions for Coach Dixon? Uh, Brian Esprit, TCU Sports Network. Coach, you uh, you won your first round game as a player in '87, right? <laughs> yeah. And you lose the second round game to Notre Dame by one point, right? Yeah. Does that one still bother you? Yeah. Like, do, do games still bother you? Does that one still bother you? <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, it was. Uh, 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 probably every loss bothers you, but I think your your last college game probably bothers you a little bit more. But yeah, that's uh, you know, I mean, I don't know why you brought it up, Brian, but uh, you know that's who you are. Uh, but uh, um, but yeah, no, it does. And um, you know, and then obviously seeing you know the, the, the obviously we've gotten back to postseason and NIT winning the championship, but um, you know we we our history is is not great, but we're, we we're changing that and and. Uh, but uh, I guess it gets referred to more because we hadn't been, we hadn't won uh, uh, many games in the NCAA tournament. So that's uh, that's something. But yeah, no, it's uh, it's uh, you know as a coach, it probably more. But I was a as a player, I was probably a coach in in in, in the making. So it, it sticks a little longer. Yeah, no question. Thanks for bringing that up. <laughs> Any other questions for coach? Thank you. Thank you, guys. Good luck. <laughs> All right, a recording of this press conference will be available in the NCAA Digital Media Hub at ncaa.veritone.com. Transcripts provided by ASAP and will be posted shortly. Thank you. Good luck, Coach.